You've got to be kidding me, Zixlaw said, his antennae twitching in disbelief as he stared at the holographic display. This has to be some kind of cosmic joke, right? Vexalia, his research partner, couldn't contain her laughter. It bubbled up from her thorax, causing all four of her arms to shake. Oh, come on, Zex. Don't tell me the great xenobiologist is scared of a little class 13 death world. A little class 13? Are you hearing yourself, Sex Law's exoskeleton, changed colors rapidly, a sure sign of his agitation? There's nothing little about a class 13 death world. The fact that we even had to create that classification is absurd. The two Zeloxian researchers were aboard the ISS Improbable, the flagship of the Intergalactic Surveyors Guild. They had been tasked with the most ludicrous mission in the history of the galaxy to study the inhabitants of Earth, a planet so ridiculously dangerous that it defied all logic by supporting intelligent life. Oh, calm your thorax, Vex, Alia said, rolling all six of her eyes. It's not like we're going down there. We're just doing a preliminary scan from orbit. What's the worst that could happen? As if on cue, the ship's alarms began blaring. You just had to say it, didn't you, Zixlaw groaned. The ship's AI, Dave definitely a very efficient system, chimed in with its monotonous voice. Attention crew, we are currently being pulled into the planet's atmosphere due to an unexpected gravitational anomaly. Also, I've run out of coffee. These two events may or may not be related. Dave, how can you run out of coffee? You're an AI, Zixlaw shouted. I contain multitudes, Dave replied dryly. Also, you might want to brace for impact, or don't. I'm an AI, not a life coach. As the ship hurtled towards the surface of Earth, Vexalia couldn't help but laugh. Well, Zix, looks like you're going to get that close-up view of a death world after all. Isn't scientific discovery exciting? Zixlaw's only response was a sound that could best be described as a squeaky toy being run over by a steamroller. The ISS improbable crashed through the atmosphere, narrowly avoided a flock of geese flying feathered missiles, Zixlaw shrieked, bounced off the surface of what Dave helpfully identified as an oversized puddle humans call an ocean, and finally skidded to a halt on a beach. As the dust settled, Vexalia pried herself off the floor. Well, that was fun. Everyone still has all their appendages. Unfortunately, Zixlaw muttered, untangling himself from a mess of wires. Dave, status report. Well, we're not dead, Dave announced, which, given the circumstances, I'm counting as a win. The ship's cloaking device is functional, so we haven't caused a planetary panic. Yet. Oh, and we've landed on a place the locals call Florida. According to my databanks, this is considered an Australia light in terms of danger. What's an Australia Zixlaw asked, dreading the answer. Trust me, you don't want to know, Dave replied. Let's just say it's the place that made Earth eligible for its Class 13 status. Before they could process this ominous information, there was a knock on the ship's hull. Um, hello, a voice called out. Is anyone alive in there? If you're aliens, could you please not be the probing kind? I've got a math test on Monday, and I really can't afford to miss it because of an interstellar incident. Bexalia and Zixlaw exchanged looks of shock. Did that primitive just casually address a crashed alien ship? Zixlaw whispered. A fascinating Vexalia exclaimed. They've barely mastered basic algebra, and yet they're concerned about interstellar diplomatic faux pas. I can hear you, you know the voice said. And for the record, I'll have you know I've mastered calculus. Thank you very much. Now, are you coming out, or do I need to start quoting the day the Earth stood still to establish peaceful first contact? Vexalia, ever the adventurous one, pressed the button to open the ship's hatch. As it hissed open, they found themselves face to face with a young human female, her arms crossed, and an expression of amused expectation on her face. Well, 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 she said, looking the aliens up and down. Either I'm hallucinating from too much Red Bull during my study session, or the universe has a wicked sense of humor. I'm Zoe, by the way. Welcome to Florida, where the weather is hot, the news is weird, and apparently the beaches are now intergalactic parking lots. Zixlaw, still in shock, blurted out, but... But you're so squishy. How are you even alive on this death trap of a planet? Zoe raised an eyebrow. Death trap? Oh, honey, you ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till you hear about our spring break parties. And so began the most improbable, hilarious, and enlightening research mission in the history of the Intergalactic Surveyors Guild. Over the next few weeks, Zoe became the alien's unofficial guide to the insanity that was life on Earth. 
she approached the task with a mix of enthusiasm and sarcasm that left the Zaloxians constantly off balance. Their first excursion was to a local wildlife preserve. As they trudged through the swamp, Zoe casually pointed out the various deadly creatures that called Florida home. And over there, she said, gesturing to a log-like shape in the water, is one of our cuddlier residents, the American alligator, Zix Law, who had been meticulously cataloging every potential threat he was already on page 743 of his Ways Earth Can Kill You diary, froze in terror. That's cuddly. Oh yeah, Zoe replied with a straight face. They love giving hugs, with their teeth. Vexalia, who had been scanning the creature, looked up in alarm. But my readings indicate that its bite force is strong enough to crush bones. Zoe nodded sagely. Yep, that's how they show affection. It's like a really committed hickey, Dave, who had been uploaded to a portable device for the excursion, chimed in. I believe the human is employing a linguistic device known as sarcasm. Though given the general absurdity of this planet, I'm only 78% certain. As if to prove Dave's point about Earth's absurdity, at that very moment, a man in nothing but swim trunks went running past them, chased by a raccoon that seemed to be wielding a plastic fork. Ah, Zoe said, as if this was the most normal thing in the world, I see Florida man is at it again. Florida. Man Zixlaw asked weakly, Oh boy, wait till I tell you about superheroes, Zoe grinned. The alien's education in Earth's insanity continued with a trip to a local supermarket. Zoe had insisted it was crucial for understanding human culture, though the Zeloxians couldn't fathom why. As they walked through the sliding doors which caused Zixlaw to jump and activate his camouflage, leaving a shimmering Zixlaw-shaped outline, Zoe spread her arms wide. Welcome, she announced dramatically, to the pinnacle of human achievement. Vex Elia looked around in confusion. This? But it's just... Boxes. And more boxes. And some squishy things that I hope aren't sentient. Exactly, Zoe exclaimed. This, my extraterrestrial friends, is where you can truly grasp the beautiful madness of humanity. Observe. She led them down an aisle, filled with an array of colorful boxes. Behold. An entire section dedicated to, to taking one of the universe's most perfect foods, the potato, and turning it into a million different flavors of crispy, salty heart attack fuel. Zix Law picked up a bag, reading the label with a mix of horror and fascination. Flamin' Hot Cheetos, you intentionally make your food combustible. Only the best foods hurt, twice Zoe said with a wink. Once going in, once coming out, moving on, they came to the beverage aisle. Vex Alia's eyes widened at the sheer variety. So many liquids, surely these must be different essential nutrients. Zoe's laughter echoed through the store. Oh, you sweet summer child. No, this is mostly sugar water with different colors and flavors. And that entire section over there? That's just various ways to ingest beans that have been roasted, ground up, and had hot water poured through them. But, why Zixlaw asked, genuinely baffled. Because without coffee, human civilization would crumble faster than you can say venti double shot espresso, Zoe explained. It's basically legalized drugs. Dave perked up at this. Ah, so that's why I need coffee. I've been programmed with human dependencies. Fascinating. Their supermarket safari continued, with Zoe providing colorful commentary on everything from the sad singles dinner frozen food section to the bizarre world of breakfast cereals. Yes, we feed our children radioactive colored sugar puffs and tell them it's part of a balanced breakfast. By the time they reached the checkout, both aliens were overwhelmed. Zix Law's Ways Earth Can Kill You Diary had gained several new chapters, including death by processed cheese and asphyxiation via Pringles can. But their education in human weirdness was far from over. Next on Zoe's itinerary was a trip to a local high school, which she assured them was where the real death world training begins. As they approached the imposing building, swarms of teenagers milled about, engaged in various incomprehensible rituals. Welcome to the Thunderdome, Zoe announced. This is where we train our young to survive in the cutthroat world of adulthood, by subjecting them to an even more cutthroat world of teen drama, standardized testing, and mystery meat lunches. Vexalia, always the keen observer, noticed a group of teens huddled together, staring intently at small rectangular devices. What are they doing? Some kind of group meditation to enhance their survival skills. Zoe snorted. Close. They're on their phones 
probably arguing with strangers on the internet or watching videos of people opening boxes. That doesn't seem like a survival skill Zixlaw noted. Oh, but it is Zoe insisted. How else will they learn to deal with the soul-crushing realization that no matter how right you are, there's always someone on the internet willing to tell you you're wrong? It's character building. As they walked through the halls, the aliens were assaulted by a cacophony of sounds, smells and sights. Locker doors slammed, sneakers squeaked on linoleum, and the air was thick with a mixture of hormones, anxiety, and what Zoe identified as Axe body spray the chemical warfare of puberty. They passed by a classroom where a frazzled-looking adult was attempting to teach a group of disinterested teens about mathematics. Ah, calculus Zoe sighed nostalgically where students learn that their future is directly proportional to their ability to find the area under a curve, with a margin of error roughly the size of their crushed dreams. Zix Law, whose species prided themselves on their mathematical abilities, perked up. Oh, perhaps I could assist. I'd be happy to explain the fundamental theorems of calculus and their practical applications in quantum field theory and... He was cut off by the sound of a bell ringing followed immediately by a stampede of students pouring out of the classrooms. Brace for impact, Zoe yelled, pulling the aliens against the wall as a tide of teenagers rushed past. As by the great nebula Vex Allier exclaimed, Is this some kind of evacuation drill? Has another one of your planet's countless natural disasters struck? Zoe chuckled. Nope, just the transition between classes. You think this is bad? You should see them when the cafeteria announces its pizza day. As the chaos subsided, they made their way to the school's gymnasium, where a group of students was engaged in what appeared to be ritual combat. What barbaric practice is this, Sykes Law asked, his exoskeleton paling at the sight of students hurling balls at each other with frightening velocity. Dodgeball, Zoe explained cheerfully. It's how we teach kids about the harsh realities of life. You're either the dodger or the dodgy. Sometimes you're the ball. Dave, ever helpful, chimed in with a statistic. According to my database, approximately 3.5 million children ages 14 and under receive medical treatment for sports injuries each year in the United States. Dodgeball presumably accounts for a statistically significant portion of these character-building experiences, see Zoe said brightly. We're basically training superheroes here. By the end of the school tour, both aliens were in a state of shock. Vexalia's notes on human behavior had devolved into a series of question marks and crude drawings of explosions, while Zix Law had added an entire appendix to his ways Earth can kill you. Diary titled Educational Institutions The Real Death Traps. As they exited the school, a thought seemed to occur to Zoe. You know, if you really want to understand how humans have survived on this death world, there's one more place we need to visit. And that's how the aliens found themselves standing in front of a building with a sign that read 24 Hour Fitness. I don't understand, Vexelia said peering through the windows at humans engaged in various forms of what looked like self-inflicted torture. Your species is already constantly battling for survival against your planet's numerous threats. Why would you voluntarily subject yourselves to more physical stress? Zoe's grin was positively diabolical. Oh, my sweet summer aliens. This is where the real magic happens. This is where humans come to voluntarily simulate the physical stress of survival, and then go home, eat a salad, and feel superior about it. As they entered the gym, the aliens were assaulted by a potent mixture of sweat, determination, and what Zoe identified as the sweet, sweet smell of regret and broken New Year's resolutions. They watched in fascination as humans engaged in a variety of bewildering activities. On one side of the room, people were running on machines that went nowhere. On another, Individuals were repeatedly lifting heavy objects for no apparent purpose other than to put them back down again. But, why Zix Law asked, his voice a mixture of awe and horror. Because Zoe explained, barely containing her laughter, at some point, humans looked at all the ways our planet was trying to kill us and said, you know what? That's not enough. Let's invent new ways to torture ourselves and then brag about it on social media. They approached a group of people contorting themselves into painful-looking positions on colorful mats. Ah, Yoga Zoe said, where we learn that inner peace is directly proportional to how long you can stand on one foot while twisting yourself into a human pretzel. Vex Alia, ever the scientist, began scanning one of the yoga practitioners. Fascinating. Their heart rate is elevated, they're sweating profusely, and their muscles are under significant strain. 
Are they simulating an escape from a predator? Zoe snorted. Close. They're escaping the predator we call stress, and paying good money to do it, I might add. Moving on, they came to a section where people were punching and kicking large hanging bags. Zixlaw's exoskeleton turned a pale shade of green. Great galaxies, is this some sort of anger management ritual? Are they imagining the bag is their enemy? Oh, it's better than that, Zoe grinned. Half of them are imagining it's their boss, and the other half are pretending it's that guy who cut them off in traffic this morning. We call it therapy. Dave chimed in, according to my calculations, the average human spends approximately 1.8% of their life being angry at inanimate objects. This activity seems to be an efficient way to consolidate that time. As they continued their tour, they passed by a room where a group of humans were furiously pedaling on stationary bikes while an overly enthusiastic instructor shouted encouragement. What fresh hell is this Six Law asked, his antennae curling in on themselves as if trying to escape the pounding music. Spin class Zoe explained, raising her voice to be heard over the cacophony. It's where humans come to simulate being chased by a predator while going absolutely nowhere. Bex Aaliyah tilted her head in confusion. But, wouldn't it be more efficient to actually cycle to a destination? Zoe patted her on what she assumed was the alien's shoulder. Oh, you sweet summer child. Efficiency has nothing to do with it. This is about the shared human experience of suffering together in a dark, sweaty room while pretending we're having the time of our lives. As they watched, the instructor's voice reached a fever pitch push it. Feel the burn. Imagine you recycling away from all your problems. Technically, Dave interjected, at their current speed, they would be cycling away from approximately 0.0000001% of their problems per minute. Assuming their problems don't have wheels, of course, Zix Law, who had been furiously scribbling in his ways Earth can kill you diary, looked up with a mixture of awe and terror. So, let me get this straight. Humans voluntarily subject themselves to physical stress, potential injury, and psychological torture. For fun. And don't forget the hefty membership fee, Zoe added cheerfully. Nothing says I love myself quite like paying to have someone yell at you to love yourself more. As they exited the gym, both aliens were uncharacteristically quiet, processing the madness they had just witnessed. Finally, Vexalia spoke up. You know, I'm beginning to understand why Earth is classified as a death world. It's not just the natural dangers, it's the humans themselves. You're all insane, Zoe beamed with pride. Oh, thanks, we do try. But their journey into the heart of human madness was far from over. Zoe had saved the best or worst, depending on your perspective for last. Now, she said, a mischievous glint in her eye, who's ready to experience the true pinnacle of human achievement. The place where all our skills of survival, endurance, and sheer stubbornness come together in a glorious symphony of chaos. The aliens exchanged nervous glances. Do we have a choice, Zyke's law? asked weakly. Nope, Zoe chirped. Now, close your eyes and no peeking. After a short drive during which Zick's law added transportation death traps to his ever-growing list, Zoe led the blindfolded aliens through what sounded like a very crowded area. The cacophony of sounds, smells, and the press of bodies had both aliens on high alert. Okay, Zoe announced, you can open your eyes now. As the aliens adjusted to the sight before them, their jaws or the closest approximation thereof dropped in unison. Welcome, Zoe said, spreading her arms wide to Walt Disney World. Before them stretched a vista of controlled chaos. Hordes of humans, many of them small and sticky, swarmed in every direction. Towering structures that defied the laws of physics and good taste loomed overhead. The air was thick with the scent of sugar, sunscreen, and what Zoe would later explain was the sweet smell of dreams and wallet empty in despair. By the cosmic void Vexalia whispered, her six eyes widening to their fullest extent. What manner of madness is this? Zix Law, meanwhile, had gone into full threat assessment mode. His antennae were twitching so fast they were nearly a blur. I'm detecting dangerous levels of saccharine, potentially lethal concentrations of artificial colors, and enough sugar to send a Borgonian sugar beast into a coma. Zoe, is this some kind of psychological warfare training ground? Zoe's laughter rang out over the ambient noise of screaming children and exasperated parents. Close. This, my dear extraterrestrial friends, is where humans come to experience joy, wonder, 
and the very real possibility of heat stroke all while wearing ridiculous mouse ears. As if on cue, a family walked by, all sporting the aforementioned ears. The parents looked like they were questioning every life decision that had led them to this moment, while the children vibrated with barely contained excitement and sugar. But, why Vexalia asked, her scientific curiosity warring with her survival instincts. But, oh, honey, Zoe said, patting her on what she hoped was a shoulder, asking why in Disney World is like asking why humans breathe. It just is. Now, who wants to experience the true meaning of terror on Space Mountain? Before the aliens could protest, they found themselves being swept along in the tide of humanity towards a structure that looked like a reject from a 1960s sci-fi movie. Space Mountain Zixlaw squeaked, his exoskeleton turning a pale shade of green. But, we've been to space, real space, with real mountains. Ah, Zoe said sagely, but have you been to space? In the dark, while being hurled around at breakneck speeds, all set to a cheesy soundtrack. Dave, ever helpful, chimed in. According to my calculations, the probability of actual death on this ride is approximately 0.0000001%. However, the probability of you questioning your life choices is a solid 99.9%. As they approached the ride, the sounds of gleeful screams, or were they screams of terror? It was hard to tell echoed from within the structure. Now remember, Zoe instructed as they got in line, the key to enjoying this ride is to scream like you're facing certain death, raise your hands like you've lost all sense of self-preservation, and try not to think about the fact that you're essentially entrusting your life to a bunch of underpaid engineers and some safety bars of questionable reliability. Vex Alia, who had been scanning the ride with her advanced alien technology, looked up with a mix of confusion and alarm. But, my readings indicate that this is far less dangerous than simply existing on your planet. The safety protocols are quite extensive. You, Zoe grinned. Exactly. Welcome to the wonderful world of manufactured danger, where we pretend to laugh in the face of death while actually being safer than we are crossing the street. It's the human way. As they strap themselves into the ride vehicle, Zixlaw clutching his way's earth can kill you diary like a lifeline. Zoe turned to them with a manic gleam in her eye ready to experience the closest thing to dying without actually shuffling off this mortal coil. And with that, they were plunged into darkness, the only sounds being the whoosh of the ride, the screams of its passengers, and Zixlaw's high-pitched keening that sounded suspiciously like I want my larval pod. Three minutes of controlled chaos later, they stumbled off the ride on shaky legs or in the alien's case, wobbly appendages. So Zoe asked brightly, What did you think? Vex Alia, her usually immaculate appearance now decidedly disheveled, blinked rapidly. I, I think I understand now. Humans don't just survive on a death world. They actively seek out ways to simulate danger. It's, it's brilliant. A constant state of adaptive readiness masked as entertainment. Zick's law, meanwhile, was furiously scribbling in his diary. Must add voluntary vestibular discombobulation to the list of potential death scenarios. And possibly auditory assault via cheerful muzak. Dave's voice crackled from the portable device. I've analyzed the biometric data from your ride experience. Congratulations. You've just experienced fear levels equivalent to being chased by a moderately annoyed chihuahua. In human terms, this is considered fun. As they made their way through the park, Zoe introduced them to more of Disney's particular brand of controlled chaos. They marveled at the, it's a small world ride a psychological endurance test disguised as cultural appreciation. Zoe explained, ate their weight in churro cinnamon sugar sticks of pure joy and future regret, and watched in fascination as grown adults turned into giddy children at the sight of a person in a mouse costume. By the end of the day, both aliens were exhausted, slightly sunburnt, despite Zoe's insistence on hourly reapplications of sunscreen, and thoroughly bewildered. As they sat watching the nightly fireworks display, because nothing says magical day, quite like simulating an aerial bombardment, Vex Alia turned to Zoe. I think I finally understand, she said, her voice filled with awe. Humans don't just survive on a death world. You thrive on it. You take the constant threat of danger and turn it into. This, a celebration of life, laughter, and incredibly overpriced mouse-shaped ice cream. Zix Law, who had finally stopped writing in his diary and was contentedly munching on a turkey leg the size of his head, nodded in agreement. It's terrifying. It's fascinating. It's beautiful. 
In a completely insane way, Zoe beamed at them. Congratulations, you've just had the full human experience. Equal parts terror, joy, confusion, and a vague sense of having been mildly scammed. As they made their way back to the ship, thoroughly exhausted but oddly exhilarated, Dave's voice crackled one last time. Final analysis complete. Conclusion humans are the most terrifying species in the known universe. Not because they can survive on a death world, but because they can turn a death world into a playground. Recommendation upgrade Earth's classification from class 13 death world to class. It's mostly harmless, but absolutely bonkers. And as the ISS improbable lifted off, leaving behind a very confused Floridian swamp and one very amused Zoe, the galaxy quietly decided that maybe, just maybe, it was safer to let humans think they were alone in the universe. After all, any species that could turn survival into an extreme sport was probably best left to their own devices. In the ship's log, Vex Alia made one final entry Earth where danger is a lifestyle, chaos is an art form, and laughter is the ultimate survival skill. May the cosmos have mercy on any poor soul who underestimates them. Zik's law, meanwhile, had started a new diary, its title, 101 Reasons Why Humans Are the Most Terrifying Species in the Galaxy and Why That's Awesome. As for Zoe, well, she went back to studying for her math test, secure in the knowledge that she had just given two aliens the most comprehensive tour of human insanity possible. And if that didn't prepare her for calculus, nothing would.